So right here we have a special glove here with a Bebop sensors. So hello, so who are you? So my name's CJ, I run business development for Bebop Sensors. And uh, uh, you, you're doing a special smart glove? What is this? So our technology is that we use fabric to measure physical change. I can go ahead and take that off so you're not stuck yeah. here the whole time. So uh, do you have, can you show how it is inside? Do you have it somewhere sure, behind sure, here? Sure, sure, sure. Go ahead, I'll, I'll yeah. bring it over. Thanks. Um, so this is what's inside? Correct, so those little black strips are our smart fabric technology. It's a piezo-resistive, non-woven material that in this deployment we're using to measure finger bend. So, for example, you can uh, play the guitar. Correct. So let me get this on, calibrate the system. And there's also a built-in haptics? Correct, so when I strum the guitar chords, I can feel in the fingertips uh, nice. a buzzing, a vibration. How do they feel the, the vibration in the finger? It's, it's impressive, right? So the, each, each tip has a vibration? Correct. So five fingertips and then a palm haptic as well. But you're not showing here how it looks like the vibration, right? No, we don't, we don't have a, an example of that of, uh, out. So this is the raw sensor. The haptics are not added in yeah. this example. But uh, it's somehow connected, the haptics. And uh, is it the same kind of material or something totally different, the haptics? It's a, it's a proprietary transducer that we, we developed in-house. And we simply run uh, conductive inks in order to get data from both the haptics and the fabric sensors. So, can you play some cool song? I mean, it's a, it's a software demo, just yeah. meant to showcase finger bend. Not necessarily individual sounds, but it gets the point oh, across. That's really cool. Yeah, it's oh, us. Oh, you're doing a whole... Uh... So there's a chord progression. Oh, nice. You should perform like this. Yeah, one day. One day. One day? I'm more of a dancer than a musician, but... but uh, um, so I saw the Bebop sensors at the ID Tech X once, and yes. you had some uh, stuff in the shoe mm -hmm. and uh, instruments, right? Yeah, so our core technology was developed under Keep It Build Instruments, our sister company, that we, um, we built uh, keyboards and drum pads out of, and then we found some industrial applications and for the, the smart fabric technology. Yes, yeah, so the bot pad is commercially available through KeithMcMillanInstruments.com. So this is a real product right there? Correct. The bot pad sells for about $200, $199, and it deploys our, our smart fabric technology in a music device that has X, oh. Y, and C uh, pressure sensing. Nice. So this is a uh, very stable, very precise, or? Correct. Is yeah. that the best kind of like uh, electronic drum kit? Uh, it is at the moment, so. Um, so whatever Roland and uh, Korg, all these guys are doing, it's not, it's not as accurate as, as this one? You can do rolls with it. I'm not much of a drummer myself, but if you're skilled enough to do a, a roll. Yeah, you can look on the website and see the celebrities that have happened. Um, nice. Yeah, so check, check out KeithMcMillanInstruments.com. You get plenty of information. So our technology is commercially deployed in the musical instruments. And for the past three and a half years, uh, Bebop has been developing the technology, building relationships with global manufacturers and Fortune 500 companies. And we've seen a lot of adoption in automotive, consumer health, uh, VR and gaming, and then IoT. So any sort of connected product where they need a flexible uh, force sensor, we've seen really good adoption. Uh, where are you based? We're in Berkeley, California, and we're a team of about 20 right now. So this is Silicon Valley? Correct. All right. A lot of good technology companies there. How old is the company? Uh, Bebop is three and a half years old. Keith McMillan Instruments is about eight or nine years old. So it's a It's partner? a sister company, yeah. We, sister. We, we, we transferred the IP and the patents over to Bebop, so. All right, and uh, right here I'm stepping on one of your sensors, right? Correct, so, so this is a floor mat, it understands. Uh, right here you can see my, you can see I'm going back and forth on my feet, on the sides. This insole, you can understand gate. And uh, you have a, a demonstration right here. So we can, we can also do fingertip level pressure. We can do multi-touch, swipes, taps, gestures. It's a very low response range for uh, pressure input. So um, how does it work? What is behind here? So the, the fabric is our core technology. It's a non-woven piezo-resistive material that is the sensor. So the fabric is what we're uh, drawing information from. It, we it, print conductive inks in order to draw data from the system, but the magic is the, the fabric. Fabric? Correct. Like your t-shirt? Uh, correct, so a little different, but... How is it different from your t-shirt? Uh, so this is a cotton material. This is a non-woven that we, we treat with a chemical, a uh, graphite uh, slurry, essentially. So we bind graphite nanoparticles to the fibers, 
and that allows you to understand a change in resistance. Everybody's talking about graphene as the next thing, and you are like, you're totally on top of it. You graphite know and graphene are pretty similar. Oh, it's not the same. Okay. Graphite is something else, but it, it's conductive. Resistive. Resistive. The, our technology is resistive. So like the 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 fabric gets um, stretched or yeah, we, we measure the compression when the fibers deform. A uh, capacitive system, if you're wearing a glove, won't work. So resistance technology is valuable in that it doesn't matter. As long as the fibers are deforming under a seat, under a cushion, uh, under fingertip pressure, we can measure that. So in Silicon Valley, uh, 20 people, so yep. you're not a startup. We are, we are. kind of like growing. Or yeah, big. so we're, we're currently raising our Series A round, and we have a lot of interest from uh, several venture capital firms and strategic partners. I hope not some Bitcoin miners or something, I'm joking. No, but no, that's no. A, something hey, if, if someone wants to fund us, we'll take okay. their money. <laughs> I'm joking. But, uh, um, uh, so how soon could this potentially be everywhere and clothes and everywhere? Like, is, is there is this potentially mass producible? Absolutely. So we're we're we only work with partners who have scale that can take our products to market in the tens or hundreds or eventually millions of units a year. So um, we expect to commercially deploy Bebop technology at the end of 2018. Like um, some kind of. Um this is, could be great for gaming, right? Absolutely. Gaming, education, rehabilitation. Uh, there's a lot of uses. We would provide the hardware and then build APIs that our partners can build their own software and applications on top of. I'm thinking uh, people should wear like a Michael Jackson glove. They could. And that keep the, keep the smartphone in the pocket. Dancers, dancers could absolutely. Uh, and do, uh, do like uh, gestures to uh, respond to the emails and stuff. Sure. Uh, so that's, that's possible. And type in the air. Could you type in the air? You could, absolutely. The the limit Does the possibilities are limitless. Accelerometer? Um, there's a there's a, like there's an IMU in the system for nine degrees of freedom. Can we see it or is it secret? It's, it's, it, we don't we don't have it displayed. So there's a PCB right here. Correct. And a Bluetooth With a chip. Fifteen hour life. You could also use a charge. flexible battery, potentially. Possibly the back of the hands. Right. It so doesn't it doesn't like, impact your ability to to flex your fingers, so the battery is not the main concern. The companies that we're speaking to are looking for accurate bend sensors and quality haptics that is it are accurate? Uh, extremely accurate. Really? Uh, we can get accuracy within a degree and a half uh, of bend, and then uh, six millisecond response rate. So it's about 150 frames per second. So subframe latency on the uh, glove response. And you can scratch the wall. What does that do? You can. So we can understand textures. Uh, this is a rough surface, so it provides a nice feedback. Uh, on the system, but you could also have things like a sponge or a smooth surface, so the vibration of the haptics would be a lot lower. How much is battery life? Does it use huge amount hours. of battery? 15 hours. So it's not a huge battery no. consumption? On a two hour charge, 15 hours. How about hours. the haptics? What about it? Is it very battery intensive? No, it, it's a 15 hour charge with the haptics and activation of the, the whole glove. But how does the battery life compare and the haptics compared to like a smartphone haptic thing, a motor that vibrates? There are different technologies. I'm, I'm not familiar with cell phone haptics. Could you play us out? Yeah, sure. So, this is my favorite song. It's called Playing Chords.